Well, Kamala Harris is San Francisco's first woman district attorney and the first African-American woman to hold the office in California. Her new book, Smart on Crime, A Career Prosecutor's Plan to Make Us Safer, offers some new solutions to fighting crime in our community. So welcome, Thank Kamala you, Harris. Thank you. You know, we were talking about education over there just a few minutes ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, in your book, Education Pays a Big Part, how do you connect education and crime fighting and smart crime fighting? Well, essentially it all boils down to the public health model, which tells us that the best way to deal with an epidemic is prevention. It's least costly and most effective. Um, if we, we lose that, then let's get into early intervention once the sniffles start or once we see signs. Mm -hmm. And um, if we are at the point, however, of dealing with the epidemic in the emergency room, it's much too late and it's much too costly. So using that as what has been proven to be an effective model and applying that to the crime epidemic, uh, I would suggest to you that an issue such as elementary school truancy, an elementary school child who is missing 30, 40, up to 80 days of a 180 day school year is a very early and clear sign of who invariably will be the high school dropout and then the victim of crime and the perpetrator of crime. And so a lot of what I talk about in the book ad addresses issues involving children through that prism of understanding that there are clear signs that have been proven to me as a career prosecutor and all of us. And if we address those issues at the front end, it'll be cheaper and more effective than dealing with the recidivist criminal who is part of the revolving door of the state prison system that you all were talking about mm -hmm. earlier. And you use the term smart on crime uh, throughout your book, that right. is the key. What does that mean, smart on crime, right. especially in a world that we live in where money is so scarce to do anything, to make any kind of structural changes? Well, it's a slogan of mine born primarily out of my feeling that for too long we've um, asked these very simplistic questions about criminal justice policy that offer only two choices. You know, either you're soft on crime or you're tough on crime. And instead, I suggest we should be smart on crime, which means really let's, let's build metrics into our, um, into our measure of how effective we have been with our criminal justice system. And let's recognize that while all of us have the goal of achieving public safety, the system that we have designed is not actually working when you look at the dollars spent and, and the failure of certain systems. So, for example, you look at uh, the prison system in California. On an annual basis, we release 120,000 prisoners because they have served their time. But within three years of their release, 70% reoffend. It's called recidivism. It's the highest recidivism rate in the country. And I will share with you what you probably know, which is that the California Department of Corrections occupies about a $10 billion budget item in a state budget that is on the verge of bankruptcy. See earlier discussion. Mm -hmm. And um, in looking at those numbers alone, we can see that we are not achieving a goal. And so part of the smart on crime philosophy suggests that we should pay attention to that fact. We should pay attention to recidivism as one of the biggest challenges to public safety and focus on that. And so, for example, in the book Smart on Crime, I outline what we've done in San Francisco, which is we've created a reentry initiative called Back on Track that's focused on the 18 through 24 year old first time low level nonviolent drug sales offender where we've partnered with the private sector the Chamber of Commerce with um, our friends in labor the building trades and and community nonprofits and we've addressed a lot of what your panel was talking about mm -hmm. the fact that these 18 through 24 year olds a lot of them are parents parents who have a natural desire to parent their children but not necessarily the skills so we bring on board the community based organizations we deal with the fact that most of them need to get a GED and be enrolled in City College none of them have employable skills so let's enroll them in the apprenticeship programs offered by the carpenters and the plumbers and over the course of the last four and a half years back on track has uh, it, it basically reduced the recidivism rate for this population from 54 percent to less than 10 percent it's been so successful, in fact, that the United States Department of Justice has chosen it as a model of innovation for law enforcement in the United States. And a couple of weeks ago, Governor Schwarzenegger actually signed into law a bill that we wrote that was carried by Speaker Karen Bass. So that as of January, we will have back on track in California's penal code as a model of what we should be doing to be smart on crime. And yet you can't run away from the charges of those who do not agree with you. They call it soft on crime, that you, that you can't, 
you can't be a social worker as a prosecutor. Well, I think that, again, that's a simplistic view when people think that you cannot recognize that there are many layers. You, you have to also recognize that crime is not monolithic. Um, I strongly believe, and, and the work of my office has proven it to be true, that when we're talking about serious and violent crime, lock them up. In San Francisco, in my office, we've increased the conviction rates for the DA's office to the highest they've been in just under 15 years. Uh, but when we're talking about nonviolent crime, that is actually the crime that is occupying the bulk of our public resources and beds in our state prison system. And we need to have a meaningful system to reduce the likelihood that that revolving door will continue. Reentry initiatives have been proven to be the antidote to the revolving door problem. And that's why the National District Attorneys Association chose Back on Track as a model for DA's offices around the country. And I would tell you that my fellow elected DA's from around the country are not anything close to being soft on crime. Well, there's one other charge that I, I know in a state you're, you're running for office. Oh, and that is your position on the death penalty. That you must be asked that question by everybody. I'm personally opposed to the death penalty, but I'll follow the law. My position on the death penalty is the same as four of the last nine attorneys general of California. And, um, and the focus that I think most people want to see when we talk about the role and the responsibility and capacity of the attorney general on this issue of the criminal justice system is to provide leadership around innovation, and recognizing that uh, we are in a rut. We had that conversation with your panel, and we need to get smarter around you know, measuring outcomes and, and figuring out that what we all want is public safety. We don't want rhetoric that is framed through ideology. We want results. And that's what Smart on Crime is about as well. All right, we want to thank you so much, District Attorney Kamala Harris, you, for joining us. Thank you very much.